not too friendly of a weather, but Baruch Hashem, Chavedim came to the rescue, and now Baruch Hashem, God is running, and I have whatever I need to have in order to have at least a few minutes of a class today. Erev Shabbat Kodesh, Berashat Pinhas, Opinehas, Makam Saba. Today we'll discuss very briefly uh, two Sadikim plus a message uh, on Perashat Pinhas. This Shabbat is also Shabbat Mavarchim Chodesh Menachem Av, which next Shabbat, Ba'ezat Hashem, will be Rosh Chodesh Av, Hava Aleinu Letova. So tomorrow, let's start with today's day, rather the 22nd. day of uh, Tammuz corresponding to uh, July 2nd. So today is the yard site of the great Hacham second. So today is the yard site of the great Hacham Yom Tov Yedid Halevi Ben Zakiye Alav uh, Shalom, the great chief rabbi of uh, Halav, that in the later uh, part of his life moved to uh, the United States, to Brooklyn, obviously, uh, father of Hacham uh, uh, Yedid, Meir Yedid, and Isaac Yedid, and uh, Jack Yedid, and the rest of the siblings. Uh, without a doubt, for those who remember when we spoke about him in the past, uh, he was not only a great Talmud Hacham, but Torah was his life, and Ahavat Hashem was his life, and uh, serving Hashem in a beautiful way was something that, if you remember, uh, when eulogies were given in his honor, all the Hachamim talked about his great devotion to Torah learning. If I recall correctly, he took a spot in the Ahiezer, synagogue on the second floor and he needed just a table and his sefarim uh, to be close to him. Also his uh, way of praying a tefillah in a proper pronounced manner, a tefillah without interruptions, a tefillah without talking, that was part of his uh, greatness. And obviously we understand that the more a person invests in Abu Dhat Hashem, uh, the more spiritual dividends the person receives. So he had son that there's a hood of the great rabbi, the great Hacham, that many of us uh, knew uh, throughout his last years of life in America. Be'ezat Hashem be a militiosher for his family and uh, for his students and obviously everybody who thinks and came across him uh, earlier in life. Of the one and only Rabbeinu Moshe Cordovero, Tomer de Bora de Ramak. We are very close to this great uh, Sadiq, especially through the Sefer Tomer de Bora, which is words of Itarerud, words of Teshuvah. And uh, he lived, as we know, uh, right around the time of Rabbeinu Ha'ari, Rabbeinu Yosef Karo, Rabbeinu Shul. Imitate HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The question is, what does... Imitate HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The question is, what does it mean imitating Hashem? Hashem is infinite. Hashem is uh, forever. So the short answer that Rabbeinu Moshe Cordovero gives is the concept of a person learning from the way that Akadosh Baruch Hu functions and runs the world in our minuscule, limited fashion, we should imitate him in the best way possible. For example, we find the first message that he brings in his uh, beautiful Sefer, Tomer de Bora, is the concept of sablanut, the concept of tolerance, the concept of patience. And it says, why so powerful is the Midah of sablanut? 
he explains that Akadosh Baruch Hu doesn't activate automatically judgment, literally. We say Hashem, Hashem, Kel Rahum Behanun Erech Apaim. Erech Apaim means what? Literally means slow to anger, meaning to say that despite the person's behavior or misbehavior, that will be the proper way. But Olam still says, you know what? I'm giving you Erech apayim means what? Literally means slow to anger. Meaning to say that despite the person's behavior or misbehavior, that will be the proper way. But Olam still says, you know what? I'm giving you a chance and giving you another chance and giving you another chance. In other words, chances become, so to speak, like a gift from Borei Olam, which is great. Which is great because at the end of the day, if that will not be, so then our life may not be a chaz shalom, perhaps, but it should be. So therefore, we need to understand that, yes, Hashem is infinite and Hashem is almighty, but that doesn't mean that we cannot imitate Hashem. Obviously, not at the same level, but one thing is for sure. The concept of... Sorry. The concept of, in our life, activating that kind of patience. And once patience becomes part of our persona, guarantee anger will subside, impulsiveness will subside, and gradually the person will turn from that impulse or anger situation into more of a patient and in a more tolerant way. And guess what? We discuss this more than once. Part of our goals in our life is to become better. To say that's the way I am, we already know that that's not the way. For some people, maybe the way, maybe because they don't learn Torah and they don't understand what it really means to live and to change and to improve. And also, all of the above are important, but there is one more that is essential and is in part one of the main goals and purposes why mankind were created. As I mentioned this in one of the classes, maybe in the night, not in the day, that that is one of the concept of marriage. That through marriage, the person learns and changes and alters his persona. And that's why the Gemara writes that a person that is married is considered, so to speak, a complete creation. Why? Because the wife supplements the husband Two halves become one hold, and now the man that was single uh, for X, Y, Z years of life, and now suddenly he's realizing, okay, now I need to be more careful, more cautious, more respectful of my wife, uh, be more giving and more attentive to my children. So just these two aspects that happen when marriage takes place, that gradually and continuously it helps the person to become the true potential that Hashem made them make him to become in other words to li to live and come back on the same way that we came uh, I'm not sure that is our goal and purpose but when a person understands and activates these concepts definitely good improvements come to the person's life. I'd like to touch one uh, aspect or two, perhaps. Let's find the proper angle here. I did not bring my tripod. Okay, let's see here. Oh, almost there. Beautiful. Can see better? Okay. Two, last week, we also had 
a title on a perasha, Balak. But that perasha, regretfully, ended up in a tragedy. The Yeserara is working today, over time. We also had a title on a perasha, Balak. But that perasha, regretfully, ended up in a tragedy. The Yeserara is working today, over time. Over time. Okay, so we're, gonna not, we're not gonna allow him to win. We just have to improvise tactics that he will not Okay, so let's continue. The Perasha Balak regretfully ended up in a very unfortunate note. At the end, when Bil'am failed every time that he attempted to curse the Jewish people, he came into a blessing. He gave one tip, one insider's tip to Bil'am, to Balak. What does he say? Elokeshel elle sone zimahu. God despises immorality bottom line it's a known fact and we saw the outcome look at the end of the Torah portion of Balak I will see the inappropriate behavior of unfortunately one of the great leaders of Israel in a way that is beyond our understanding how come that a person can act in such a way especially towards the end of his life he was already 250 years old. Zimbri ben Salu, also known as Shilumiel ben Suri Shaddai, also known as Shaul ben Akena'anit. All these three names are the same person. But yet, it shows us that there is no guarantee that a person can say, oh, I live this way for so many years, I am already have insurance and no, nothing will affect me. Regret destruction on the Jewish people and regretfully we all know the tragic end of the perasha the concept of 24,000 casualties uh, described clearly black and white at the end of perashat Balak Pinhas steps up to the plate and he sees that the behavior of Shlumiel ben Suri Shaddai caused a Hilul Hashem Hilul Hashem literally means the secretion of God's names, meaning to say that when a person, a holy and, 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 and a public leader like a Zimri ben Salu was for his entire tribe, that behavior requires extreme uh, measures. And this is where Pinhas step up to the plate. Although, you know, we see that afterwards, Pinhas, he was not given a position of leadership. Pinhas remained Pinhas, but God says, since I know your intentions were holy and pure, and you did it to defend my glory and the glory of the Jewish people, I'm giving you a covenant of peace. And if you look in the Perasha, it's clearly that says, Hineni noten lo et beriti shalom. So the question is, hold on a minute, if he became such a hero national hero for the jewish people and because of his action the plague came to an end so why he was not given an honorary position to continue leading the jewish people so interesting enough how a uh, not popular this may sound and it's written in the books of musar that bin has had a great reaction on the moment it may sound, and it's written in the books of Musar, that Pinhas had a great reaction on the moment of need, on the moment that an action was required. <coughs> Excuse me for that. Pinhas acted. But when a person becomes a leader of the Jewish people, acting with impulse is not the best idea. Thank you. 
acting with impulse it's not the best idea because God forbid yeah sometimes you heard of these uh, impulsive shoppers or impulsive impulsive eaters okay what's the common denominator with all of the above that an impulse is activating an action in the person shopper means that you spend more than you have or you spend unnecessarily eating we know the side effects but when you're a leader and imagine yourself that for one action it ended up in an execution so god forbid god forbid not every action requires an execution and as i said before pinhas did it to protect god's glory which is called Kiddush Hashem. Zimbri was doing a Hillul Hashem. Zimbri was desecrating God's names for his action. But Pinhas came to tell the world that the actions of Zimbri were unacceptable. And that is the reason why the Pasuk says, Hineni noten lo. God says, do not worry. I know the way people are thinking and I know that you are not going to be a leader of the Jewish people like Moshe or Aharon etc although Aharon was already gone by this time I believe but nevertheless God says I'm giving you the covenant of peace what does it mean that Pinhas at this moment was promoted from a Levi to a Kohen even though that he was born from Aharon a Kohen grandson and Pinhas son but this dynasty of Kehuna, it was Aharon, El Azar, and the children born after this appointment. But this uh, action, Mehila, but the birth of Pinhas took place before El Azar was appointed as a Kohen and subsequently as a Kohen Gadol. So therefore, Pinhas, up to this Perasha, he was a Levi, but now Pinhas was promoted by Hashem to become a Kohen for Am Israel. Later on, just for information purposes, Pinhas was the one who went to scout the land with Kalev Ben Yefune. If you remember uh, Perasha Shelah, the Perasha of the spies, we see the similar Haftarah when Yoshua sends two spies. Who were these two spies? Kalev Ben Yefune who already was a spy in the time of Moshe Rabbeinu, and he came back with a positive note about the land of Israel. And the next one was Pinhas, as a, as, a, as a showing that Pinhas had the courage to step up and to do what's correct. So Yoshua bin Nun sensed and felt that Pinhas was a righteous and a holy person capable and willing to carry this mission on behalf of the Jewish people. So what do we learn from this? Lesson number one, that could be actually dangerous and could be problematic. Obviously, if you see a situation of danger or a situation that you need to save someone, your natural instinct, instincts will activate, will kick in the adrenaline and you will do what you have to do. But that doesn't mean that every time impulse is the leading or the driver in your life because Hasve Shalom sometimes or many times that impulse it turns detrimental to the person making decisions which are not appropriate making decisions that can hurt others etc but I repeat the actions of Pinhas were justified and how do we know this short answer first of all the promiscuous act that Zimbri ben Salu was committing publicly, that's already a problem. And Bil'am knew this. Bil'am, from last week's Torah portion, he said to Balak, the God of the Jewish people despises immorality. What more immoral way of a 250 year old man goes with the daughter of a king? That's who she was, Kosbi Batsur, was the daughter of Balak. But I'll tell you one more thing. Maybe you knew this or not. Her main target was not Zimbri ben Salu. 
her main target was actually Moshe Rabbeinu. That's who she came to look for. So Zimbri ben Salu says, who are you looking for? Moshe. And what does Zimbri ben Salu says? I'm bigger than Moshe. I'm 250 years old. I'm from the tribe of Shimon. And he's from the tribe of Levi. So when she heard this, she says, okay. And you know, on 14th, and the Torah gives us details. One more time to prove the actions of uh, Pinhas, that Pinhas executed them exactly on the part of the body where the sin was being committed. And there were many additional miracles that did happen to uh, Pinhas in this week's or last week's uh, Perasha, which at the end of the day, both Perashiot are uh, combined. So, Hashem should help us, Be'ezat Hashem, that wherever you are, should you have a beautiful Shabbat, and let it be the Zechut of Hacham, Yom Tov Yedid Levi Ben Zaki, Alev Shalom, and the great of Rabbi Moshe Cordovero, that the yours is tomorrow, and the message of Perashat eh, Pinhas, Be'ezat Hashem, should give us highlights and power to do a better Avodat Hashem, and remember, with limited in limited situation, impulse, it's welcome and necessary, but God forbid, God forbid, should not become a way of life because acting by impulse not always has a proper and a suitable ending for uh, the person. You know, many times a person comes to make a decision and in English, there is a statement that says, let me sleep on it. Actually, this statement is actually a Torah statement that a person, before making a decision or a certain type of decision, should sleep on it means, let me digest it, let me sleep, let me relax for a bit, let me think about it, and then I'll make the decision. Sometimes in the name of impulse or in the name of desperation, the person uh, comes and does and acts in a way which is not ideal, and then the person regretfully pays the price indirectly or indirectly. We wish everybody to have a beautiful Shabbat, and Be'ezat Hashem will uh, try to broadcast live again on Sunday. For those in the West Deal area, Be'ezat Hashem, I'll be spending Shabbat, Be'ezat Hashem, God willing, at the West Deal uh, Synagogue. Shabbat Shalom and Mevorach to everybody.